right, everyone. So we just finished off loading our catch. Kept a nice black rock for dinner. So we're gonna do a catch, clean, and cook with this little guy here. Uh, probably make some sort of a fish sandwich with uh, crispy panko coatings. So uh, I'll flay this guy up real quick, and then uh, tonight we'll bring him home and and cook him for dinner. That'll be scrumptious. So I usually start on the right side for flaying. This is my good flay knife. It's actually a, a Dexter uh, eight inch Santa safe. It's a knife to use for fishing mostly, but I ain't no professional flayer, so don't flay me in the comments. <laughs> Just kind of uh, cut in and can feel it run down the ribs. Right around here you'll run to the spine and you kind of just curve over it down onto the other side of that flay. Spread it apart a little bit so you can see. Right here, the rib cage comes out. You just kind of curve up over it. Some people will just cut into it and trim them up later. That works. And there's kind of like a little indentation right here where the back side of the ribs come down. So I'm going to leave this attached, this flay. Uh, I got a few tips on my last attempt to flay fish to leave the flay attached so it keeps the fish more level instead of making them sit like this because there's no flay on the other side. So we'll give that a go. That makes sense. Yep. I think it'll work pretty good because it's pretty important to keep your blade flat. Otherwise you end up cutting into the flay and leaving half the meat on the bones. Was that a comment or just? Yep, it was a comment. Actually a couple of people suggested that. A great tip. Let's see how it goes. Eh, a little messy. Can't be perfect 100% of the time. No, only part of the time, otherwise, I'll run out of energy. Eh, little meat left there. Not too bad though. Let's back over and slice this off. It's a little bloody there. It's just a little pocket of blood. It's supposed to from the inside of the gut cavity, but so yeah, not too bad. Um, I don't have a cutting board down here, so I'm just going to leave the skin on for now and do this trimming up of these, uh, this fin tissue uh, once we get home and have a cutting board. So we'll rinse these guys up, bag them, and bring them home. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Uh, earlier today we cut up this black rockfish fillet on the boat. Um, tonight we're going to be making a crispy panko fried uh, fish sandwich. So as you saw I flayed it up on the boat so now we're going to trim it and skin it. Alright so here you got your black rockfish fillet. As you can see over here there's some white tissue that's just part of the uh, spine and also the back fin. So that stuff has a little bit of cartilage in it. You don't really want to leave it in there so you'll trim it up. Uh, I just have a flexible um, Victor Knox flaying knife here. Not sponsored by the way. Uh, you'll just take it, cut in like that and just kind of shave away a little bit of that white flesh 
Now, generally you want to do this before you skin it because that can, if there is a bone or something in it, it'll stop your knife on that side and that's annoying. So cut that off. Also, if you feel in here, there can sometimes be a rib bone. And so kind of just cut a V similar to this. And that'll just kind of take all of those bones out of there. Don't have to worry about it. Try not to block the camera here. All right, uh, so it's all trimmed up. We'll go ahead and skin it here. So what you wanna do is take your knife and just cut straight down along the tail. There's a little bit of flesh here that's not very thick, so don't worry about wasting it, but enough room to kind of get your fingers in there and grasp that flesh that you left behind. And you just kind of work your knife in like that at probably around a 30 degree angle. Enough to just lift the skin or cut the skin away from it and get a handhold on it. And then you can kind of both work your knife back and forth like this and also the flay like that. And that'll just skin it. Just like that. Ta da! So there's some brown skin left on it, that's just like the Omega-3. We don't generally take that off, because it's good for you. So we'll leave that on. Look over your flay for any more trimming that needs done. Sometimes some more of that skin uh, comes off, or some more of that white tissue comes off the skin on the top, usually, so cut that up. Check for any parts that got left behind on the back side. And it looks pretty good. So I'll go ahead and give this a rinse. Get all those big scales off of it. All right, set this on a plate because my cutting board is covered in scales. The plate just materializes. <laughs> Chuck the skin in the garbage. Give your cutting board a knife for quick rinse. Alright, so you cut your piece in half. Uh, this is a tail piece. It makes great fish sandwiches because it's uh, skinny and cooks easily and quick and uh, consistently. And this thick part is the loin. Um, usually you want to cook tails together because then your sandwiches all cook at the same time. That's if you're cooking for more than one. But in the case of this loin, you can actually cut it in half, like butterfly it, and it'll pretty much be the same thickness as your tail piece. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Perfect. So these ones are actually pretty big. Depending on your bun size, you can cut them in half like this. And you have to remember that the breading will actually make your piece bigger because you're putting a coating on it. So take that into account if you have smaller uh, buns that you're putting it on. In fact, I think we'll go ahead and cut these in half because our buns are kind of small. Alrighty, perfect. Okay, so we have our four pieces there. We'll bring them over to the breading station and get frying. All right, we're over here at the breading station. Uh, first, we're gonna start by seasoning our fish here. Uh, just gonna put some salt on them. I don't know, kind of mixed opinions on whether you should season your fish before or after. 
as far as salt goes anyway, because they say it takes the moisture out of it, making it less moist, but I don't know. The way I figure is that if you don't season it before you put your breading on, then your fish will be land. So just throw some salt on it and it'll leach some moisture out of it. So just let it sit for a few minutes. Also, uh, I feel like if you don't do this, then the extra moisture will leach out and make your breading soggy. So this is the way I like to do it. Alrighty, so a few minutes later, um, and take your paper towel off these. Fire up our pan here. We just have regular uh, corn oil, canola oil, whatever you want to call it. Fire up your pan, get it heating. We have just probably about a tablespoon of oil in there. Maybe a little bit less, not too much. Uh, you want to flour your flour your flour. Flour your flour. Flour your flour. Yeah, you want to season your flour. Just a little salt, pepper, and garlic. Just mix it a little bit. And then you can start powdering your fish. Just get a good even coating, make sure all the sides have it, and just shake them off like that. Now if I were smart I'd have another plate, but I don't. <laughs> so yeah, just do this to all your fish pieces, set them aside, keep letting your pan heat. Be sure to make a mess while you're at it. That means you're doing something right. That just means you're getting a nice even coating. Yep. Alright, set this flour aside. Now never do that if the pan is already hot. Unless you want to singe your fingers. We actually have one of these Lodge handle uh, oven mitt things. It's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. yeah, just keep heating up your pan there, and once it starts, just kind of uh, you'll see waves from the oil. Uh, no, I'm not a cook, so I don't have like specific terms for stuff. But anyway, carry on. Put it in your egg wash here. Get your fish in your egg wash. And over to your panko. And just kind of uh, get a nice even coating on there. Now clearly I did not get enough panko. But that's okay. I'm just gonna do one piece here. So you want nice high heat, um, roll the oil around it a little bit, and you don't want to leave this for long. It's probably only a couple side, a couple minutes per side. All right, while we're waiting for this to cook, we'll zoom over to Tristan, who is preparing us some nice coleslaw. Oh yeah. So yeah, while Matt's frying up those fish, I'll get started on the coleslaw. So we've got some mayo. Whoa, whoa, almost dropped that. Uh, so for mayo, I'd say probably like a, I don't know, like a tablespoon or so. Just winging it? Yeah, nice. I, that's what I usually do. I, I'm too lazy to actually measure it out. Just go by taste, huh? Yep. Nice. So yeah, like a 
I don't know, roughly a tablespoon of mayo or something, and a little splash of vinegar. Oh. And I usually improvise as I go. Like, if I do too much vinegar like I just did, I'll add more mayo or add more sugar or whatever. That was clearly way too much vinegar. So yeah, I just had to dump some of that vinegar because I put way too much. Now I've got to add back some mayo. Let's mix that in. There we go. Okay, so we got mayo and vinegar. I'm going to add a a little bit of sugar, probably like, I don't know, a, a teaspoon or something. Hmm. Maybe a bit more. Tangy still. Yep. I also like to add some uh, stone ground mustard too. Like, I don't know, a quarter of a teaspoon or something. Not much. I think that's good. Nice. Want to give it a little test, Matt? Delicious. Nice. Did I succeed? I'd say that's a pass. Oh, a pass? Just a pass? A good pass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright. And then uh, for cabbage, I like. Again, not, I don't really measure stuff out, so I usually just like go next to the stem, but a little bit outward so you don't get the bitter core mixed in. Then I just thinly shred it. awkward there, but I always am. Then just cut that in half. And, uh, that should do it for the cabbage. Can always chop more if needed. Just mix that in. And yeah. Add some salt, because I forgot to do that when I was making the sauce. Mix that in. And there you have it. That's the coleslaw that I made. Pretty good. Alright, so we'll do our first flip here. You can kind of see on the sides, it starts getting brown. So just keep an eye on that. Scoop it up, move your oil over the spot, flip it over. Nice. That's a nice coat. Yeah, nice breading. ASMR. Sweet. Now the key here is not to mess with it. Just let it do its thing. 
All right, looks like the bottom's about done. Let's put it off here. Move it over to our plate. Now you can put it on a wire rack. That's actually probably a better idea. But double check to make sure that's cooked. Yep. All right, so that's all cooked. Uh, that was only probably three or four minutes on the cooker. We'll carry on here, cook up the rest, and then bring you back once we're assembling our sandwich. I think I need a little bit more oil in here. Shoot it right in the middle. That's about a tablespoon in total, I'd say. Just so that it makes contact with panko and makes it nice and golden brown. So you're wanting to cook these about two minutes each side, but the best key is, or the best indicator is visually, just watch that your panko isn't getting too brown. When you see it start getting brown along the bottom edge, that's contact with the pan, flip it over. That'll be fine. Here's our four chunks. You can keep these warm in the oven, probably just set it for like 150. Don't want to continue cooking them, otherwise they'll dry out. But uh, yeah, you you want actually want to cook your fish pretty close to the time that you're ready to eat it. Otherwise, the panko does tend to get a little bit uh, soggy. So cook them as close to meal time as you can, and they will be delicious. Also, uh, apply a little bit of salt to the top of these. Sticks to the oil and. There you have a delicious tray of panko rockfish. Yeah. All right, with a quick aioli here. This is just like a cream sauce for your bun. Probably about a tablespoon of uh, sour cream. Tablespoon of mayo. yourself some sriracha yeah probably just by taste but just go with a teaspoon of that and a little splash of lemon juice just probably like a quarter teaspoon let's say a little mix this might actually be hot a lot more orange I was expecting. Although the sour cream should cool it off pretty nicely, so adjust to your taste. If you like spicy, add more. If not, then dial, dial it back. So I just stir it up till it's uh, smooth. Tastes good. Give me a little taste of that, please. Yeah, looks good. All right, we'll get our buns going, make our sandwiches. All right, so we just threw our uh, our bun in the toaster real quick. Gonna go ahead and put together our sandwich. Get yourself a little dollop of the aioli. Spread it on. And these uh, flays are a little bit big for these buns, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one in half. Set that on there like that. And this is the way we like it around here. Uh, we actually put our coleslaw on it. Gives it a nice tang, and a crunch. Pop the bun on top, just like that. Yum. All right, buddy. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Delicious. Yeah, I like the... That's good breading.
And the fish is nice. Yeah, I like how the coleslaw gives it a crunch. Mm -hmm. Where's my bite? <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. here. All right, I'd call that a success. Good job, boys. <laughs> All right, everybody. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this catch, clean, and cook with Matt and Tristan. Yeah, and uh, if you like the video, you can leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Yeah. Now gobble that sandwich and I'll record you. You know, somebody's gonna <laughs> notice my pieces falling. I think somebody's also gonna notice my sideways sandwich bite. It was like the classic thing where some actor who looked like Justin Bieber dressed up as him and like ate a burrito from the side.